would like to welcome everyone to this October 21st meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regularly scheduled meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby under audience for guests and follow the instructions on the speaker form. The role of the board is to set goals, approve personnel and budget, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe we must educate every child, give every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and to provide a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We appreciate your interest in our students and CISD. The first item on our agenda, we're going to call the meeting to order. We do have all seven trustees here, so we do have a quorum. The first item is our Pledge of Allegiance, and we have our Sam Houston students here today to lead us in the pledge. We have Deliza Chares, Jaili Azula, Yaritzi Perales, Brooklyn McDonald, Lyric Davila, Giovanni Vasquez, Courtney Perales. Thank you. We appreciate you. I did a great job. All right. Next is our invocation, and Board Trustee Kamar Chambers is going to lead us in that. Amen. Let us bow our hands. Dearly Father, we first of all thank you for life and strength, God. We thank you for grace, mercy, peace, joy, and happiness, God. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for just being so kind uh, to us, even when we um, do the things that's not so so kind to you. So, Father, we ask that you would continue to give us wisdom, protect this district, protect those that are um, affiliated with the district, cover our students, co cover our teachers, and uh, from the front to the back. God, we just thank you right now for just for being who you are in our lives. We ask all these things, your son Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Do we have any audience for guests? No audience for guests. Next on the agenda, we have our discussion and action items. First is to establish instructional material textbook committee. Good, mean, good, good evening, Ms. Howell, Ms. Ronan, uh, distinguished members of the board. Um, going to. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to go over real quick the instructional materials committee, the process that we have. Um, in selecting the materials, we have to first make sure that we're compliant with Texas state law, the ed education agency guidelines, and then also CISD board policy. And then we just work with the, all of the stakeholders as well as the teachers, have opportunities to provide feedback, and then you guys have the approval for final selections. The process itself, um, there are some highlights that we have. We are working towards making sure that our curriculum has um, stu student data as well as teacher input. And then we're also working on making sure that all of our uh, materials are from the Texas Resource Review rubrics. And that is where the state itself has gone in and reviewed all of the resources that we have available. Um, and they have rated them. So that kind of leads me to the fourth bullet where it says aim for 100% TEKS compliance and material selection. They tell you how those materials relate to the TEKS and the percentage that they um, are related to the TEKS and 
they'll be ranked, each one of them. They have overall rankings as well as a specific individual goals for those materials. Um, and then the last one is select materials that support all students to enhance instruction. And then, of course, differentiation for special needs and English language learners. And so those are the process. And then you guys have the committee members in front of you. Does anybody have any questions about the Instructional Material Committee? Are the, uh, the people that are on here, do you have like, uh, like, do they apply to be a part of the committee or is how, how is the committee, I guess, selected? So we try to select those members that are veteran teachers, um, they're also, um, not only veteran teachers, but veteran teachers with uh, several years of experience in their grade level so that they have some content and grade level knowledge and then also based upon the recommendations of their administrators. Okay. All right. Have any of these teachers been on this committee, previous committees? Yes, sir. So last year we had several of them that were part of the science selection uh, process as well. Just a handful, not very many of them. The science teachers that you see listed there, yes, sir, they were. All right. Any, anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. And then the next up, I have the GT handbook. Um, specifically, the definition of gifted and talented, according to the TEA, is a gifted and talented student exhibits high performance capability in intellectual, creative, and artistic areas and possesses an unusual capacity for leadership and excels in a specific academic field. Corsicana ISD defines a GT student as those who perform at a remarkably high level compared to their peers. The goals of CISD's gifted and talented program are that includes identify students in K through 12 in need of gifted services, develop self-directed learners and enhance complex thinking skills, as well as provide differentiated instructional strategies tailored to meet the needs of gifted students. And we also, um, previously we've had a universal screening that's been in K and fourth grade. Um, and we have, based upon the recommendation of the gifted and talented coordinator, as well as the gifted and talented, um, the schools around us that have the gifted and talented programs, they also use the criteria of universal screening at the first grade level. And so um, just based upon a lot of feedback, we've moved the universal screening to first grade. And that's been really the ma major change that's happened to the uh, GT handbook this year. Anybody have any questions about the gifted and talented? Yeah, so I know that we do K through, you say we do K through 12, mm -hmm. but what happens in 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th? There's not really. So 7th and 8th grade this year, we are just starting this program and it's not, um, we're, we're offering it up first to students, but it's a STEM program. And specifically, we're partnering with PLTW Gateway Program. And through that program, students are having the uh, opportunity to build, um, and I'm not real uh, technical whenever it comes to computers, but they're basically building the chip um, and all of the processors that go along with it. And then uh, along with that, they're working on coding. Once they build it, then they're gonna work on coding. And so um, that's what we've started this year. Um, there's been a few bumps along the way, but the kids are really enjoying it. So. On the coding, is it, um, is it like Python? Is it, because I would tell you, just because my son is uh -huh. in the engineering program this year, okay. 
a lot of students from other schools had gone through high school programs where coding mm -hmm. Python was uh, like an elective or you know a, a course for them, yeah. um, which put them way ahead because it's an entry level class. So I didn't know if that's something maybe we could look at in the future. Um, so it's definitely we're for working, all engineering. Mm -hmm, and that was something too that Ms. Howell and I have discussed is make is trying to expand the STEM part of the program. We just had to have a starting a launch right. point, but um, it's definitely a good program uh, to kind of open up to. And based upon the company's recommendations, a lot of districts are using PLTW Gateway, um, like Coppell High School. Um, I can't off the top of my head name right. a few others, but they've seen a lot of success. And they don't just have this one specific one. They have several other ones that can be offered through sixth through eighth grade and then work to expand those to the high school. So that's that's the hope. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next, we have a maintenance update. <laughs> this should be so good. Ma'am? I said this should be so good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Howe, Madam President, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, Ms. Howe has uh, tasked me to do a maintenance report and for this to be the first of kind of a series of maintenance reports on a monthly basis. So we've uh, come up with a few categories that we're going to hit on. Um, uh -huh. And then uh, future, future topics in this presentation be based off what's going on in the district that month. Uh, probably some good and bad and suggestions from you and, uh, and other staff members. Uh, and, and community members as well, as to be as transparent as we can over where we sit uh, with our current facilities in the district. Uh, first off, an, an update on the HVAC replacements that went on at the high school this year. There are over 140 units at the high school. We replaced 79 of them. That work uh, is completed at the moment. They spent the last couple of months of the summer working through kinks in terms of Temperatures uh, in terms of creating downtimes that those units stop running at night and on the weekends that are a big part of what we're hoping that the money savings will be. Uh, the original projection with performance services on, on savings that we were hoping to get annually at the high school was upwards of over $20,000 uh, on the electricity bill, basically. Uh, I can tell you this, that in, in the only... The only two months that we have on record at this point that we've gotten bills in, uh, in July, we were able to save a little over $5,000, and in August, we saved about 7000 Now, I did also did some research check on temperatures from the prior year. Uh, it was a lot hotter, uh, predominantly in, the, in the, those two months last year, than it was this year. Uh, however, I do think that we are... Uh, seeing some savings because of the efficiency of the units and the downtime that that, uh, that that new program has been able to create for us and not running it as much as we have in the past. So that that's an exciting deal for us. Um, installs that were not planned for this year uh, have included five units. Uh, our our uh, maintenance team was able to get that done over fall break while we did not have students. Um, you can see here in the very elementary had two units that we had to replace at the tune of $23,000 uh, that were total losses that we could not repair that had been repaired previously. All of these have been repaired previously and were at a total loss at this point. Uh, Collins Intermediate had one at, to the tune of $8,700 that had to be replaced and Bowie had one for $8,900. The crane that we that we rented that, uh, that was... Uh, Best way I can describe it over the break is it was awesome. It was a, it was a really big crane. The maintenance guys were very excited about it. And I went, took a look. It was a cool deal uh, on all those campuses. It cost us about $1,300. Uh, and we were, we were tickled to get that done while we didn't have kids. What is the expected life cycle of a, of a AC unit? I asked that high question school. too. 15 to 20 years is what I've been told, okay. uh, depending on all, all types of factors. Um, <laughs> On this next slide I, is a little bit of a HVAC maintenance plan on some things that we've got that will go into keeping these units at the high school up. Uh, staff specifically dedicated to the units 
We've got a two-man team right now that does nothing but replace air conditioner units uh, throughout the district on a daily basis. Now, <clears throat> in the event that there's something major going on that requires the attention of all the guys or repairs, whatever the case may be, they do get pulled on occasion, uh, but, but they stay with that uh, majority of the time. Um, our HVAC PM checklist, which is listed in the presentation here, is done uh, every three months is what our attempt to do that is. Uh, and that's done with our HVAC techs that we have on staff, as well as that checklist does get hit by the guys that are replacing those filters when they come in. So we're, we, we actually get, uh, get doubled up on that checklist as often as we can on all the units. Uh, now I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we replaced uh, 79. Yes, ma'am. So, so we got about 60. Are the 60 newer units, 61 newer units, or yes, are they ones that we're going to have to replace? Yep, and that, that was why they bid it that way. Those are, those are later model units okay. uh, that have been replaced over the last five, five to eight years Okay. Uh, as, a, as a whole. So we think we're good there Feel at the moment? Feel pretty good about it right now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Plumbing. So plumbing's an issue at the high school due to the age of, of the high school, uh, it is very, very unpredictable to determine how much we're going to spend every year. I've got uh, a small cost analysis based off last year's repairs uh, and what we've had to do thus far this year. Uh, there's lots of factors that go into the repairs. Uh, vapes are, are a, a, a major problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna hide that fact. It's a major problem uh, in schools uh, all, all over the country. Um, so they're flushing the vapes? Yes, ma'am. That... Yes, ma Which is twofold. It's, it's a problem because they have vapes on campus. Right. Uh, the fact that they get flushed as often as they do tells me our principals are doing a good job of being, being active, and those need to be discarded uh, quickly. Uh, the, big, the biggest problem is they, don't, they just don't flush well. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah. And I'll say this, too, on the yeah. student services side. I'm not presenting on that tonight, but our, our, uh, our placement numbers for... Uh, THC and nicotine vapes on campus is down uh, substantially from from what it was a year ago so but that's a different presentation I'll save that uh, but there are some some major problems when those get flushed down down the toilets that they do deal with often uh, vandalism that, that's a that's a vague term some of its vandalism there it's just so easy to vandalize at the moment because of the age um, of all the toiletries in the in the bath in the restrooms, uh, th there's just there's a very break breakable breakable piece to everything that they're using on all the fixtures and sinks that are mounted on the walls, uh, specifically at the high school right now. It just does not take much to tear some of that stuff up. Um, you can see the cost. We spent about fifty five hundred dollars last year um, just on parts on repairs and plumbing, and uh, and, and, and we have spent 2500 thus far this year. Like I said, it's not a very predictable deal. Mr. Doring, would you, Mr. Doring? Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind taking this up to the board? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Or you just, you just pass it off and sit back down. Uh, Thank you. We love each other around here. Careful. <laughs> yeah, don't. Uh, that's a section of pipe that we took out. Uh, did you clean it no. first? Did no. not. No. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Right. I, I wanted you to get the real Hey, we're building our experience. immune system. I'm good with that. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, that came I'm out right off the, beside a classroom by the, oh uh, gosh, off the breezeway at the high school. It's been in my office. Right around the beginning of school. That's a water pipe from the high school. Oh, okay. No, it's not. It's not the sewer pipe. It's not. Oh, okay, I'm it's good not. with that then. I really wish it was. It's not, yeah. It's yeah. not pretty. <laughs> That'd be really no. fun to see. It's not. I would uh, think it'd be bigger. That's a problem in terms of repairs. Yeah. And having to, re to repair those, those things that have got some ancient to them. It's also a problem that our, that our student body has water running through the lines uh, yeah. from pipes that old on campus. Um, and, but we will stay with it. We will make those repairs all year long for them until we can find a better way. All right, I have a question before you move yes, on. Well, I'm hearing a buzz. I will talk loud. Is that fine? You're good. Okay. Um, so that was actually taken out of the high school. Yes, ma'am. And water was running through that. Yes, ma'am. And we'll say that because I really couldn't look through it. <laughs> so that was a pipe that was just taken out, and we were using that. Yes, ma'am. It's full of rust. Yes, ma'am. 
So if that water is going to the cafeteria or other places, sources where you could get water, that, yeah, that's not good. Can you just talk about what happened at the high school a few weeks ago with our restrooms when you would flush one, the other one would yeah, overflow? Uh, and, and it's hard to exactly identify because of the condition that you see pipes in right here, but we are talking about a sewage line when we're talking about the most recent issue at the high school. Uh, the shape that they're in, it, it's just when, when you get a major clog coming, coming from one of the classroom wings, uh, there's, a, there's a backflow that essentially happens that kicks up all the restrooms on all, on all the wings that are running on the same area on the west end of the high school. Um, we do not in the district have uh, snakes and jetters that are strong enough to clean those, clean those out, so we do bring in a company. Uh, to the tune of about $300 an hour uh, with high-pressure jetters to clean those lines out when that happens. Um, the best thing I can tell you is that, that they're not real far from that, and, and it just doesn't take a, 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 a ton of things to clog uh, when, when you've got that kind of blockage in pipes. Age, you know, it's not anybody's fault. Uh, well, the high school was built, what? 1969 opened in 1970. 70. So yes, started in 68. So a lot of years. First, yeah. Pops is the first thing you put down. So yes, sir. Yeah. It had to have been in 68 when the pops were laid down. Yes, sir. A lot of years. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about paint for just a second. As paint is a uh, paint is a maintenance plan when you're dealing with things that have age on them. Uh, we're, we're limited a little bit on the amount of painting that we can do with, with current staffing. Um, we put together some numbers on some possibilities on what we could do to really, really make a difference and to do it district-wide. It was, it was, I mean, we could come up with a high school project on paint, but I, there's, there's nothing equitable about that. Uh, if we were to, to add or figure out a way to create a two-man painting team, we could, hit, we could hit 30 classrooms a year and do the exterior uh, of two campuses in the in the summertime, we feel like we could take that on, and it be it be realistic. Uh, that is a plan, regardless of how we move forward uh, with fixing a lot of these uh, older things in the district. Uh, that we're either going to look at additional staffing after this year as a possibility, and maybe or or maybe reallocating some of the current staffing uh, to have a two man painting team that paints year round. Um, that would include doing three rooms on all the elementaries, that's classrooms, uh, five rooms at CHS and CMS, and then striping parking lots and uh, power washing things as needed to keep them as up to date as possible. Uh, that's just kind of a quick overview on some, some big things at, the, at our biggest campus on this first presentation. Uh, if anybody does come up with major things that you want to talk about or hear about, on the next presentation, please email me or Ms. Howe uh, and, and let me know, and I'll have as much information as possible ready for you when we get there. Any questions? Didn't we start school earlier this year? Maybe a couple of days. I can't remember the previous year off the top of my head. Two days, I want to say. When? Kids are in school a little I believe so. We I'm normally right. start on the 12th, somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, if we save $7,000 in August, the kids are here. Oh, I see what you're saying. Or, the kids are here. We had kids for right. days in the school in August. Yeah. That means. Well, we pro be, if we're going to do that, we probably need, might, might need to look at when teachers reported if we were going to do that, because it would have been running during that same time frame when they started coming back. But when you add all without the bodies sleeping. in the building, that's just going to. No, you're right. You're right. Just that much more heat. Did yes, they sir. have the the units fully functional July and or weren't they still working on them? They were running. So they were they were, they were tweaking. Right. For several yeah. weeks. Yes, ma'am. So they weren't they fully, weren't a hundred percent like they are now. This next month will be the first full month of right. fully functional. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay. Any other questions? It wasn't a toilet pipe. It's a water pipe. It was so gross. <laughs> That's a good word. For oh you. my goodness. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Right, Bowler. Thank you. All right, next item is the consent agenda. Maybe we accept the consent agenda? Second. 
We have a motion and a second to uh, to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Now we're going to move into closed session as permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01.